Chapter 1. A Reception Meant for a Queen Welcome to the Queen Mary. How can we help you on this spooky evening? The hostess asked in an emphatical elegance. Good evening. I've got a reservation under Allen. Mike Allen, Mike said while reaching into his pants for his wallet. Mike had a weathered wallet made of a cheap broken brown leather. It was loosely held together by duct tape and a bit of hope. He fished the wallet out of his pants and slammed it on the desk. Splendid. We're happy to have you aboard, Mr. Allen, the guest services concierge said while swiftly typing away at her keyboard. Click, 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 click. The keystrokes were deliberate and annoyingly loud, like an ice maker dropping a bunch of ice cubes into a stainless steel ice tray. It must have been one of those old-school mechanical keyboards the kind you might find buried away in a garage sale or tucked away somewhere in your attic. Normally, I wouldn't pay so much mind to something so innocuous, but the commute had aggressively amplified my agitation. The concierge had a gold-plated name badge tacked onto her left lapel. Mike caught himself staring at it in an attempt to read her name. Her accent was faintly finessed with a foreign familiarity. Her demeanor was oddly lugubrious, considering she was the face of the company. What a drive, Mike said to drum up some customary small talk. In all reality, the conga line of customers wasn't much different from traversing the jungle that is the 405 freeway. It was the best California had to offer. It was the worst California had to offer. It was the 405 freeway. The check-in line moved a lot like the traffic, that is to say, at a snail's pace. Where are you coming from, Mr. Allen? Mr. Allen is my father and grandfather. You can call me Mike, sweetie. She winced a smile and replied, Where are you coming from, Mike? Thousand Oaks. Mike often dropped his hometown without pretext because it often followed a slew of unsolicited compliments. Thousand Oaks was once a rural town. Now it's more like a watered-down version of Beverly Hills. Oh, Thousand Oaks. I hear it's lovely up there this time of year. Oaktown? It's not too bad, he said while outstretching his arms like a scarecrow. Mike began to yawn and reflexively covered his gaping mouth with his palm. Tired already? Yeah, the 405 can sap the mojo out of just about anybody. Driving it can be somewhat unforgiving this time of night, you're almost better off waiting until the evening and avoid the rush hour traffic. Mike nodded in agreement and began to nonchalantly scan the lobby of the hotel. The hostess noticed his detached gaze and began to continue her friendly banter, like a fisherman throwing chum in the waters. So how long's your stay with us? Just for the night, Katerina, Mike responded in a somewhat curt fashion as he read her name badge. He fancied himself a good judge of accents, but he was starting to get perturbed that he couldn't pinpoint the origins of her dialect. Mike's eyes anchored for one second too long on the lapel of the concierge. When he looked up, he noticed her cheeks started blooming a brilliant, bashful red hue. Traversing the 405 freeway during rush hour traffic paid a heavy toll on Mike Allen's normally sunny disposition. He was about as deflated as a DMV employee counting down the last seconds of a Friday afternoon. Well, I dare say you joined us on the most popular night of the year, she said while speedily running her fingers across the keyboard. Click, 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 click. The hostess looked up from her computer monitor and asked, Are you celebrating any kind of special occasion? The hostess was a slender young woman with skin as pale as a ghost. She clearly hadn't spent much time above deck. Her pleasing demeanor was as soothing to Mike as a tub of aloe vera being dumped on a fresh sunburn. She sported a typical hotel pantsuit-style uniform. Her blonde dreadlocks careened with even the slightest movement of her head. To say the least, Mike was rather entranced but in her mystique. My grandmother once told me that I used to go around saying I would be a lifelong bachelor. What could I say? I might as well have had a tattoo on my arm that said, Lady Killer. Special? You mean aside from Halloween? She smiled and responded politely. 
Well, yes, aside from Halloween. What brings you to the Mary? The concierge raised her hands from the keyboard and made a spooky, wavy fingers gesture. She probably felt it helped tight lighten the mood and add to the ambiance. I couldn't help but smile. My grandfather stayed here on the last voyage, back in 67. Did he? Oh, how cool. It's hard to believe the last voyage was so long ago, she replied. Yeah, I thought I'd give it a shot and see what all the buzz was about for myself. No time like the present, I always say. You could say that again, she said while tactfully typing. Click, 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 click. How's your day so far? Oh, I can't complain. Who'd listen anyways, right? Click, click, click. Everything okay? What could I say? I'm a problem solver by nature. I hear someone's having a tough day and immediately feel the inclination to investigate like a drug-sniffing dog catching the scent of a fresh stash of Mary Jane tucked into the seat of an early 2000s Honda Civic. Long day, that's all. Like I said, I can't complain, she said somewhat defensively. The hostess has locked her gaze onto the computer monitor, like the hypnotic trance of a teenager discovering social media for the first time. Her pale white face basked in the brilliant bloom of blue light from the bulky computer monitor. She broke her trance and pulled out the map of the hotel from under her desk. She slid the map in front of Mike and started jotting down points of interest with a big red pen. She started slashing up the map with circles and arrows. Mike was impressed by her ability to write upside down. It was an acquired skill he was never quite able to get a solid grasp on. On board, we have two five-star restaurants. Well, first, let me ask, what did you have planned for tonight? Plans? Haven't thought that far ahead. You wouldn't happen to have any suggestions. Oh, I do. Tonight is the night for the world-famous Haunted Ghost Tour. Mike scoffed at her exuberance. He was amused by the very idea of a haunted tour. He wasn't a religious man, but open to the possibility of superstition and mysticism. Haunted tour? Mike said skeptically at the rather suspect suggestion. Trust me, it's to die for. People come from all over the world to be part of the tour, she said while tapping on the hotel map with the ballpoint pen. Mike took a second to soak in the surroundings and get a better appreciation for the ambiance of the boat. The boat was old yet lusciously luxurious. The boat was cramped yet delicately decadent. The boat was retro yet capaciously charming. To die for? No, seriously. Since 1936, the Queen Mary has had 16 reported fatalities, and who knows how many unreported. Sixteen fatalities? You're kidding me, right? I wish I was. Everything from skull fractures to accidental poisonings to natural causes, the last of which... She took a momentary pause in her exposition to click around on the keyboard. Mike looked on curiously at the hostess with an eagerness for her finish to her story. His eyebrows were raised up like two rambunctious rainbows covering his scalp. The hostess took Mike's repository respite in the conversation as a sign to continue. Sorry about that. Where was I? Something about the last of, Mike said as if hanging on her every word. He was about as transparent as a jellyfish. Ah, oh, yes, the last of the deaths. The last of the fatalities occurred on the very night your grandfather stayed aboard the Queen Mary. That's unreal. Mike replied, somewhat shocked by her proclamation. He might have been more shocked by his grandfather leaving out that crucial detail from the story. Mike chalked it up to a coincidence or old age. It wouldn't be the Queen Mary if it seemed real. These are stories, she said while trailing off and losing her focus. Mike looked at Katerina with a curious and inviting gaze. It was fairly obvious she knew how to captivate an audience. You know what? Instead of telling you, can I make you a reservation? A reservation? For the haunted ghost tour. Can I book you on the midnight tour? 
Oh, yes, the haunted tour, Mike said while pondering her obstetrous offer. He had nothing better to do and was always game for a new adventure, anything to forget about his recent foyer into the insurance startup culture. Click, 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 click. Sure thing. Why not? Sign me up. What the hell, right? You only get one shot in this crazy world. The hostess smiled and said, Excellent choice. The haunted tour on Halloween. What better way to celebrate such a special occasion? Click, 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 click. Mike leaned up against the countertop and pedantically peered over her desk. He wanted to get a better look at the reception area. Mike often dwelled on the small details. For Mike, he learned that a reception area was a lot like a book, in that you shouldn't judge a book by the cover. The countertop was made of solid red oak and polished to a sleek shine. Chug, 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 chug. The panicky printer broke Mike's trance. The concierge swung around and snatched the ticket out of the printer tray. Here you go, hot off the presses, she said while hastily handing over the torrid ticket. Mike smiled at the hostess and gently gazed into her eyes. She smiled back to match his big dumb grin. So you're currently at the reception desk here, she said while drawing a large red circle on the map. The haunted tour starts down here. Make sure to be 15 minutes early just in case. The tour lasts about an hour, but could be longer in the off chance something doesn't go according to plan, she said and paused for dramatic effect. Um, I mean, I'd be stupid not to ask. What do you mean according to plan? Well, it's a haunted tour for a reason. Guests regularly report ghosts, aberrations, ghouls, and goblins. Didn't your mother ever teach you that life doesn't always go according to plan? She asked while stroking one of her dreadlocks in a pacifying motion. I could tell she was needlessly nervous. People often underestimate the power of the subconscious mind. Whether she was aware of it or not, her nervous system was flashing sirens of distress, like an out-of-control car swerving all over the road. You... You don't really believe in all that, do you? Ghosts and ghouls? Mike asked in earnest. Mike believed in odds above all else, and to him, the odds of something being unexplainable by science were rather low. Oh, I most certainly do. The Mary stole the souls of 16 seaworthy sailors. Some say far more. So, he said to break the awkward silence, part of me wanting to divert the conversation... Who thinks like that? Who really believes in ghosts? She must have been pulling my leg. So, we have you in a portside room, room 1337, one of the best suites available. The view is to die for, she said without skipping a beat. Click, 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 click. The hostess interlocked her fingers and outstretched her hands. Her forearms were worn down from all the typing, like an author typing his tenth draft of a novel. Just go up the stairs behind you, out to the left, and take the first elevator to the top deck. She started outlining the map with various directions. How many keys would you like for your room? Are you planning for any guests, or... Just one key is fine. Click, 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 swipe, swipe. The hostess swiped the card across the card reader with a pleasantly aggressive motion, like a lumberjack sawing a tree trunk with one of those old hand saws. Here you go, she said while slowly sliding the card across the reception desk to Mike Allen. He grabbed for the card, and the two accidentally bumped fingers in the process. They both looked up at each other with an awkward smile. Do you have dinner plans? I mean... Did you have reservations at one of our restaurants? She said while stroking the tips of her dreadlocks. Dinner plans. No, no plans. No reservations. I'm open to suggestions. In reality, I was fishing for a date. I believe in odds, and dating was merely an odds game. The more attempts I made, the better luck I seemed to create for myself. Sir Winston's is our world-famous restaurant. I hear it's to die for. A must for anyone taking the haunted tour. Sir Winston. Is there anything else I can do for you? 
the hostess asked as she twirled the torrid tip of her dreadlock. Her dreadlocks were pale and white, like an interlocked twine of soaked silk. Just one thing, Cat. What's that? What are you doing for dinner? Oh, I had a long day. I'll probably grab something on the way home. Maybe a burger or something. I haven't thought that far ahead, to be honest. Why don't you join me? She didn't respond immediately to his request. She raised her left hand up to her cheek to casually cover her faintly blushed face. She looked away to ponder the outrageously oafish offer. Mike tilted his head to the side and glanced at her with an inviting gaze. I, um, I'll make it easy for you. What time do you get off? I, um, an hour. I get off in an hour. Great. I'll snag us a table. If you're hungry, come join me in an hour or so. If not, more wine for me.